Well, hello, shiny, crafty people, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Tim Totten, and today we're going to take a standard tea towel that is not necessarily all that absorbent, but it's pretty because it has a cool design, and turn it into a throw pillow. So if you want to learn how to take these fun, decorative towels and turn them into something that you can use on your bed, on your sofa, just laying on the floor, well, come down to the cutting table and I'll show you what we need to get started. So to make this throw pillow, I'm gonna need a, a tea towel that I purchased at the store. And um, it, I'm gonna use a towel like this because I love the design, but it's really not a very good towel. This is not an absorbent fabric. And so it's either gonna be decorative. And I don't know how you would lay it out where you could see this whole thing as a towel in a, in a kitchen, or you can turn it into a pillow. So uh, I'm gonna have that, the towel itself, a backing fabric. I'm gonna use actually a nylon pack cloth. This is. Uh, sort of impervious to, to fluids. It's a more of a nylon material. I'm going to use this because uh, the person I'm giving this to has a bunch of dogs, and I think it'd be better off that um, it had something that can be wiped off. We'll need an iron, an ironing board. I'm going to use a uh, rotary cutter and a, um, a, a grid to use, an acrylic piece, or you can use a pair of scissors. Of course, you'll need some of that, maybe something to mark with. And then I need one uh, something to stuff it with. Now, this is a pillow I made for my own house out of some fabric I love, and I did it envelope style, and it has a pillow form in it. And this is a standard pillow form. I'm not even sure what size this one is. Probably the cover would be 20 by 20. So this is like a 18 by 18 or something piece. This is from Ikea, actually. It says 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters. But um, the way I'm gonna do this one, because I wanna teach you a fun ladder stitch to put it together, instead of using a pillow form, which really wouldn't matter because it can't come out later, I'm just gonna use some polyfill that I have left over from another project. And it's actually a little bit cheaper depending on where you buy it and you can stuff it to as thick or as thin as you want it. So our first step is gonna to be to get our 19 inches out of this, out of this, uh, this guy here. What I've done is I've measured across the biggest part of the design, which is across his ears. And there's about 19 inches wide. Now, I could leave the stitching that's already in here. You see how it's been folded over and stitched? I think I'll use a, a, a seam ripper and just get myself a little extra fabric there so I don't have to be sewing into these pieces. And then if I look at this way, 19 inches, which is up where my finger is, yeah, that'll fit good. So it'll be a nice 19 inch square. So the first thing I'm going to do is get a seam ripper and just rip the sides here out so that we can open these fabrics and then I'll just uh, use an iron to iron them open. So you can pick all this out. It's real easy to use a seam ripper for it. Just be careful how sharp your seam ripper is because it might uh, go through the fabric too and you just want to cut the thread. So just take your time. This is the part that if you did this wrong you'd be messing up the whole thing and you'd have to come back. So it's better to take your time on this particular part and make it right. So I'm just pushing the, the seam ripper right underneath those stitches. You could also pick them this way if you wanted to, but I'm able to keep the seam ripper from going through the fabric on the other side. So it's really just cutting those threads. See the way it just came through that? You don't want it going that way through the other side of the fabric because it would mess up the pretty fabric you're gonna use. And you would, you would rip through it. So I'm just slowly being very careful how I take this out. And then when I finish that part, it's gonna open up quite a bit of extra fabric. It looks like more than, more than an inch of extra fabric when we do it. So I'm almost done at this end. All right, so now I'll open that up by hand and I'll use my uh, my press. This is a, a Home Ever press that um, I bought on Amazon. And if I can, if I think about it, I'll put the link down in the description below. I really love it. It's got good steam that pops out of there. So my friend Ryan actually gave me this, this um, press because he uses one like it when he makes masks. Uh, he's a flight attendant. Um, and during pandemic time, he was kind of stuck at home 
and people needed masks, so he started making masks, and he made me a bunch of them, and he's made over, I don't know, 12 or 1,300 for other people. He's really amazing that way. So that's opened up, and you'll see it's made extra fabric on that side, so I can really get my 19 inches out without having to go through all that. I'm gonna undo this other side, and then we'll come back in just a moment and show where we're going from there. All right, so I finished taking those out, and I'll, I'll lint roll all this stuff later. Now, I've already cut this other fabric, my 19 inch square that I need, and so I just have to find my 19 inches out of this part here, and so I have a couple of options to do that. I can, um, and what I think I, what makes the most sense is to sort of fold this thing in half, and I'm gonna think about, let me see, if I had 19 inches on this device, it would be where my hand stops up here. And half of that is nine and a half. So I put, I put nine and a half sort of in the middle of this child's face it would center this um, kind of hexagon, but it would leave two and a quarter inches at the top and really only a tiny bit underneath these little frog legs. But I kind of feel like I should center it on this piece here. So this piece here is 14 and a half inches tall. So I, I kind of know that I need at the center is gonna be at the seven and three quarters mark on this piece. So I'm gonna take a, a, just a pin and put it in there. And then that's where I would put my, if that's gonna be 19 inches, which is gonna be nine and a half, I would put my nine and a half mark on there and that would show me that I would get my 19 right below these little toes, but way up here. And I kind of feel like if it's way up here where we're gonna get that, let me zoom you out a little bit. If it's way up here is where the top is gonna to be and the bottom is gonna be down here, I think I can cheat a little bit down. So I think I can cheat more down to this area and that would work out a lot better. All right, so I kind of know that's where I'm gonna go and I'm gonna get a chalk a pen or a pencil and mark that, okay. So I'm gonna mark my 19 at the top here and my zero at the bottom. And then I just need to mark a line across there. And I'm gonna use the, the lines on my tool to line up with the corners here. So I'm gonna find sort of what makes the most sense. I'm gonna put it at my, my mark there. And then just make sure I feel like this is going straight across and I can actually use his little ears. Look at that. I can use his ears as my straight across point. And then I'll just... Now I've made that mark at the top and I can use everything else to measure off of that. So let me get my rotary cutter and cut that off. All right, and now I know that I need to do 19 inches from the middle of this the middle of this here. And so what I'm gonna do is I will go ahead and bring my, put my nine and a half mark right on the center of that. So my nine and a half mark is right on the center. And that'll tell me that my zero mark is there and my 19 inch mark is here. I can go to the bottom and do the same thing, mark off the same way put my nine and a half mark right on the middle of that piece. And I know that my zero mark is gonna be over here. My 19 is gonna be over here somewhere. And now I can use the lines of this ruler to help me get that. So I'm gonna line up straight along the top edge at my zero mark there that I had marked off and cut down. Okay, and I can do the same thing now here. I know that we've got 19 inches from this point down. In fact, I can just measure it to make sure I put the mark back on. And these are all gonna be in the seam allowances that we sew. 
So I'm not gonna even see those marks. So I'm not really worried about putting the marks on. And then my last step is to take that other mark at the top. You see it, I'll show it to you right up here. That mark that's up here. And if I want to, I can go along the bottom and also put a mark along the bottom at 19. So I can just connect the two. So now all I have to do is connect those two marks. And now I've got a 19 inch square. Let me take the pin out of Baby Yoda's face. And then our next step is to piece these two together. Look at that. So when I put them on top of each other, they should be pretty much right at 19. Look at that. So now I'm gonna pin these together and stitch all the way around, leaving an opening at one end that we can do a ladder stitch. All right, come over to the sewing machine with me and I'll show you where we go from here. All right, so you'll see here that I have pinned all around and I've left an opening at the bottom it's big enough for my hand to fit in because I'm gonna need to um, I'm gonna need to stuff this and then turn it. I'm gonna use a relatively wide uh, seam allowance, not quite a full half an inch, but about three eighths of an inch because I really want a good fold over here at the bottom. So I'm gonna use a three eighths inch, and I will uh, look at that by um, a mark on my machine. So I'm gonna start here down at the bottom, and I'm not gonna sew over that pin. And then I just go sew to the edges, to the corners here. About to where it's the same amount, so that when I turn it, I keep that same seam allowance going. I'll pull my pins out as I go along. get to the end, I'm really good at, um, because I've been doing it for a long time, eyeballing how far that is. But if you need to make a mark at your at your quarter inch or three eighths, however far you're gonna use at your seam allowance, just do that, make a quick mark. I'm also sewing with the stretchier fabric on the top because I don't want the feed dogs to stretch that fabric out underneath. It also lets me ease it in a little bit if I need to. Not one too far, there we go. Now this is a project you could do completely by hand if you just drop the head off of that pin. Did you see that? Literally the head just popped off of that pin. Isn't that crazy? Eh, well, I'm gonna throw that one away. Um, you could do this one completely by hand if you wanted. It's a pretty good project to do with kids, too, because they kind of get excited by by making something. Um, I, I just broke another pin. Oh, another pin where the head came off. Isn't that crazy? Well, all right. Oh, and I'm sewing without the needle down. I'm trying to make every mistake possible so you, you will feel at home on this project. And I even cut my fabric a little bit off there, apparently. So I'm just following the top one. Okay, I'm getting back down to the area where I am gonna stop sewing. I'm gonna go back and forth there a couple times to really cut that in so that when I put my hand in, I'm not putting too much pressure on this. Okay, a couple things I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come along with this before I even start and use an iron to press this seam open because I really want a good line there of where I'm going to put my stitch in. And this fabric, one of the great things about this fabric, one of the things that makes it a terrible towel is the fact that this is, it's creasing so well. It's because it's not absorbent fa fabric. It's pretty starchy and, and tough. So, uh, but it really, it's gonna go great for us to put this, this seam in because I'm gonna come back along and stitch along these marks that I'm, making by opening this, uh, by really pressing these seams open. So what I've done is I've pressed those open to really get a nice mark along them. See how good the mark is gonna be? And that's what we're gonna stitch along later. So I'm doing it by hand here, but I'll also hit it with my 
press before I get further along. I'll, I'll hit it with the press before I go too much further. What I need to do before then though is come back in and clip these corners. These corners here need to be clipped off because we're gonna, all of this material has to get turned inside out. So it's gonna try to shove into the corners. See here, all this is gonna get shoved into the corners. Let me give you a different angle on that. So you see, I'm gonna have to push all of this fabric inside when the corner, and then you'll have all this extra bunching and then that will make it hard for that corner to be crisp. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to trim that off. And some people just go straight across the that point. I like to come a little further and do sort of a crosswise. I go that direction and then I come back and go. And, and you don't go all the way to the point. So you don't want to cut to the threads. You'll notice that I've left a little bit of fabric on there. And that way, when this folds over and this folds over, you see now it can all fit into that interior and you'll get a nice sharp point. So I'll do the others as well. Now again, some people would just cut straight across, but let me show you what it looks like if you just cut straight across. If you just cut straight across here, leaving some, it'll still work, but what happens is that folds over and then this other one folds, and they still sort of cover each other over there. And I think you need a little more. So I like to do a little bit extra out of that. Perfect. All right, let me do the others. And I'll show you sort of my plan. I like to also sometimes just scoop it. Really gets a lot of that fabric out of there. And again, you'll notice I'm not cutting the thread. I'm just cutting within it's about a sixteenth of an inch from the thread. And I think I have one left. I do, one left. This can go pretty fast, actually, if you're doing this, um, you know, if you're working on another project or you're making a bunch of pillows, you can just get them all to this point. I like assembly line stuff. All right, and then it's time to turn this entire thing inside out. So let's do that after I iron this particular part in. All right, so turning this inside out means that I reach in and push each of these corners into my hand and then pull it out the other side. Ooh, look at that. Then I just turn the rest inside out. Now I left a pretty wide opening. You could leave a smaller opening if you want less to stitch up later, but I don't mind doing the stitching. It won't take very long. And I get to show you how to use do a ladder stitch. So. Here we go. I'm just gonna push these corners out. See here where this fabric came together? And because we clipped that fabric out of that corner, it'll be real easy even just to use my finger and push that corner out. Look how nice that's gonna look. And now we get a nice square corner without all that extra fabric shoving in there. Same thing, I'll go in this side and show you. Get that pushed. Just sort of wiggling my finger out to the corner. And now we get a much nicer corner. Now you could point this out, but I will tell you, if you're gonna point this out, use a chopstick or an actual turner. Don't use a pair of scissors. Don't use a pen. Nothing with a sharp point. Crochet hook can work if it's a big enough crochet hook. You don't want a real, and a knitting needle. It needs to be a nice blunt knitting needle. Can't be a real pointy thing. And then you have to be extra careful. But here, I just, by cutting out all that fabric, look at how a nice corner we were able to make there. See, very nice corner. All right, so that has now been turned into a pillowcase. We have our opening at the bottom here. We've got plenty of that folded in place. And now we're going to stuff this. So I, I said you could have created, I'm gonna show you another video in the future where you can make it an envelope style pillow, but I'm going to do this with polyfill and then stitch it shut. So what I like to do, the polyfill kind of gets crushed in the bag at times. So I like to take it out and just give it a little bit of a fluff. I'm tearing it kind of apart so it's just not a big ball. And after I tear it apart, I'm gonna shove it all back in. <laughs> You're gonna do a lot of this. There's gonna be a lot of shoving and stuffing and it really depends on how big you want it to be. So I'm just gonna tuft out a, a bunch of it. I just want any lumps, you know? It only takes a second to do this, but it's really helpful. It's gonna make it look so much better when you actually finish your your piece. Otherwise you'd have a big lump like this in there, you know, and, and 
So by making it as the smallest lumps as possible, it's gonna fill it. It's gonna make it feel a little more like a full piece. Now, some people would make a form and shove that in here. And you could, of course, do that. You could make another form out of another piece of fabric. This is a pretty tight woven fabric, relatively tight woven. I'm not worried about the pieces of, of polyester sticking through. And the back fabric is non-woven, so it's not going to come through. There's no holes for anything to come through. And again, I'm just sort of tufting this, this out to get, you know, to separate that ball into smaller amounts. You know, I um, I think one of the easiest ways to dress up a, a room and make it look different is to make accent pillows in whatever fabric you choose. So you can buy pillows already made. I actually, you know, if I have, I've had other pillows that I didn't like the color of anymore and just made some slip covers for them, you know, and that makes like a envelope style slip cover and they just go right on the pillow. And all of a sudden you got a whole new, a whole new sofa without buying a new sofa, right? And you'll also notice this is going to point out your corners quite a bit. That's okay, but if you wanted, you could round those when you're making them. I like the pointy kind of look. So I'm just going to keep doing this. Keep separating that stuff out. You know, my very first company that I ever started was called Treasured Memory Bears, and we took people's clothing and turned them into bears. So rather than a bear made out of Fab are made out of fur, we made bears out of fabric. Which, um, in fact, my grandmother has taken over that work for me. When people need them, I just send them to her and they pay her um, because the other business has gotten so big. But I used to love doing that. I made, um, I'll put a few pictures on right now while I'm, while I'm doing this to get an idea. It's where I really learned how to stuff things because, you know, you got to stuff teddy bears. I liked a, a bear that was more modern looking, like the ones you see in these pictures. I like a modern looking bear because I feel it, it feels like more accessible. I used to make the old timey ones that had like buttons that held the arms on and they were cute enough, but they felt like something you'd put on a shelf. And I really wanted the bears I made to feel like you would, um, you would really hug them and make them, you know, part of, part of your life and maybe put them on your bed. And so, um, I created them. I was really proud that we got to do things, them out of things like, um, Wedding dresses, let me tell you, that's actually harder than you think. Then mink, you cut mink in your house, any kind of fur, even the fake fur, it's all over your entire house. Um, and then, of course, some military ones. I really appreciated being able to take a young man's uniform from West, uh, from the Naval Academy, I think it was, or West Point, I think it was. And we turned it into a bear in his memory so that his mother would have that bear. I had a... One young man who um, made a bear out of his out of his um, fatigues and sprayed it with his cologne and left it for his girlfriend when he shipped off to uh, Iraq, I think it was at the time. Now you'll see I've got I've only got a little bit of this left, so I'm going to go ahead and use it and really stuff this pillow up. But you know it's not bad where it is right now. But I want to just add a little more to it. Now, other people have, sometimes in pillow forms, they'll put in a piece of, um, like, batting, like, uh, flat batting on the outside. Like, you could put a piece of flat batting sewn into this before you turned it, and then it would give you a nice, more even form. So, but, but I'm going to, here's what I'm going to do. I like to get this thing, get all the batting in there, and just start giving it some, some love. Hit it a little bit. Push it. Make it fit. And once I'm sure I have enough in it that I like, and I must, I have to have enough because, frankly, I don't have any more um, batting to put in there. Um, now it's time to stitch this shut. And we're going to use a ladder stitch to do that. So I'm going to get to a different position to show you how to do that because I really want you to be able to see it up close. So here's my opening, and I've actually cut a piece of thread a about twice as long as my opening, and it's doubled over. Well, the thread's actually about four times as long as the opening. And it's doubled over, so I've tied it at one end here, and that tie's gonna help me. So what I'm gonna do is gonna go inside here to where I want to stitch this shut. And I like to stitch from this side, actually. So I'm just gonna go anywhere 
on that piece in on the seam itself on the the seam allowance and sort of tie that off see how that worked so that's out of the way out of the seam then i'm going to go from behind and i and this is where that line that we stitched in is going to be real helpful because you're going to see that i'm going to start coming up through that line See, we're gonna come up through that line, but I'm gonna go further down toward the end. So let me get down here toward the end where we started it all. And I'm gonna come out of that, I got far off of there. Out along that stitch. And then, so now all of that's out of the way, out of my, out of my hair. I'm gonna go straight down to the other material and go straight in along that. I'm gonna go down toward that other material, see where the line is in that one, and go straight down 90 degrees over into that piece. I go along that line and come back out. So I'm going down and then over So this is the first rung of the ladder, and then I'm gonna make the next rung of the ladder, and that goes directly up, exactly up, and then the other one also goes over. So you see what I'm doing? I'm doing down, over, up. I'm gonna do that sort of design as we go along. And then you'll see we're starting to create these rungs on a ladder. Okay, let me do that another one. So I'm at, I'm in the top one. So I come down to the bottom one straight down and go in, go over you know, quarter of an inch or so, come out. And now you'll start to see it's going, it's a ladder, it's going across and in and across. And so I'm gonna go back straight up, go over along that line that we, that I ironed in and then pull this out. And this is a process I continue because it's called a ladder stitch. And I want to show you the fun part of once I get enough of these in, once I get enough of the rungs of the ladder in, I will show you why it's so much fun. Because you can probably start to imagine already that there's going to be a real fun moment in a minute. You really do want to make sure you're coming straight down to where you go in for the next one because you want them to line up. You're trying to get these two to line up these two points need to line up exactly where you want the fabric to come together. So it's important to watch because as you watch this point, now watch, when I pull it, it pulls the entire thing closed. And now you don't even see my white stitching and it's creating that ladder stitch. So let's keep going along this. Now I need to go back straight back up to the this Peacock's Worth colored fabric, come out. And if you had to, you could work this back open. It'll just pull this thread back out, but I don't need to, so I'm good. This is really great for fixing prop parts of like jeans that you need to fix or pants or you know a, a, anything where a seam has come open and you're like, oh, do I whip stitch this close? No, this would be a lot better solution. Look at that, pulled it nice and, and shut. But you see why it's really important that I have that line to go off of because if I didn't have the line, I would have no idea. I'd have to make sure I guessed how far this is every time. And that's not always the best, most fun thing to do. You always, sometimes you get it wrong. That's the other part, but. Now, if you're not, if you don't have a camera between you and the machine and the, what you're sewing and you're doing this when you're, where you can get your eyes closer to it, it's a little easier to do. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. 
Although I am having fun with it. I always, I just feels like I'm doing magic when this, when I do a ladder stitch. Right here, just like this magic right here, watch. Oh, it's gone, you can't see it. Now, if I was doing this, um, if I wasn't doing this for a video, I would have used a matching thread to this sort of peacock color probably because it, it would be less visible. You're still gonna see a tiny little edge of the white here, but you know, I'm not that worried about it because I'm gonna pull it pretty tight there when I get done. This is really also a, a good plan if you're gonna do, um, if you wanna do something where they, they make these cute towels, but they don't necessarily make, you know, panels of fabric for what you want, but they already make a towel. Well, hello, there you go, it's ready to go. Also, sometimes the panels are expensive, you know, and the towel is only a couple dollars. If you can buy it on sale, I bought this one at Joanne Fabric for like, Joanne Fabrics for like, I don't know, it was like three or four dollars, and if I had, they didn't have a panel that looked just like this, so it, they wouldn't have even been able, to, been able to buy this design. So um, now maybe they have a panel now, but the, they didn't when I bought this one. So I'm gonna finish stitching here to the end, and this is the only part where you have to kind of decide how, what, how are you gonna finish it. I'll show you how I finish them, because I like the way I finish it. It's just easy, but you know, it also depends on how particular you're gonna get. Are you worried that people might see this and go, that wasn't made in a factory. Well, I don't really care if people think something I made I made wasn't made in a factory. In fact, I'd rather them go, oh, it's slightly imperfect. I wonder who made this. Well, your slightly imperfect friend made it. All right, I'm here at the end. There's no more stitching to be done. So I'm gonna come through and stitch again right here at this point. See this? And then I'm gonna come in to that stitch it off like that part. And then I'm gonna go back into, right along that seam, see that? And I'm gonna go further in, way further in, where I can still feel it, I'm bunching it up, and I'm gonna put the needle out, this all the way out through here. And then I use my scissors, I clip it off, and then I fluff it so it pulls the thread tied back in there. So yeah, there you go, that's our finished edge and look our pillow is done isn't it cute look at that it's so cute i'll give him a little lint roll a little lint push but look at that i've made a pillow that's so comfortable and it has a nice back side that can be wiped off i just think uh it's really great and i'm so glad that you joined me today thank you for joining me for this great um, project of turning a tea towel into a pillow. Uh, follow me, of course, this channel. Subscribe for more fun, simple crafts like this. And until next time, folks, stay crafty. Bye for now. Oh, Grogu, don't eat that little lizard. No, frog. What is that?